same on air light. <laughs> work at the CBS affiliate in Cincinnati. Oh, we're gonna hear all about that. <laughs> Ready, Mrs. Ryan? Ready. Press on the button. <laughs> That's what, yeah. But it is chinnery. Chinnery. All right, just making sure. <laughs> just making sure. <laughs> Just making sure. <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Ryan. Hello. Uh, hello, everybody. Let's see. Here we go. Welcome back. Good evening. Uh, my name is Jay. Oh, shit. Well, let's see. Today is... <laughs> Starting it up early, folks. Here we go. Welcome back. Today is Wednesday, June 19th, 2019. My name is Jay Ryan. This is Nicole Ryan. We are the Ryans. And this is It's Tonight Show. I'm a little bit... Uh, Excited there. A little ahead of myself. <laughs> Forgive me. Our guest this evening is Chip Chinnery. Um, we we weren't making fun of it yesterday, but it obviously the what song. comes to mind is, yeah, is Chip Chinnery. And obviously he's probably grown up with that, so we're going to hear more about it. Uh, but actor, comedian, um, all around interesting fellow. Going to be in here in just a few minutes. Before that, Mrs. Ryan, the hellos. How are you today? Fantastic. Yeah, you do seem fantastic. You've been very active today doing shit. Yeah, I'm recalibrating hey, some stuff, so it Good. seems to be working out. Yeah. I've leveled up, my body's leveled up and leveled down at the same time, so I'm, <laughs> it's weird. Even Steven. <laughs> but it's working. I'm figuring it out. All right, well, that's good. Thanks. Um, I have a backstage pass. Yeah. From Mr. Ray Schaefer. Awesome. Mr. Ray Schaefer from uh, Porsche Corporate down there in Atlanta. We are so blessed to have his videos for any first-time viewers. Let us now... Take a look backstage with Ray Schaefer and see where he is today. Roll it out. Hello, Jay and Nicole from Atlanta's International Airport. Last year, I went up to Cincinnati for the Concord, and it was a wonderful show. So I was thrilled this year to have the invitation return to go back up and be a guest judge. Let's go up, talk about Porsche Classic, and see some really, really cool cars. Why don't you come along for the ride? All right, so one of the things you've got to do when you come to Cincinnati is stop at Mainly Art, which is Mark Fisk's great store, curated mid-century modern furniture. And Mark is the fellow that was kind enough to invite me up to the Concord last year to be a guest judge. And I'm back this year. I met him down at the Experience Center, and Mark's got a great um, input with the show this year, coming up with the idea for cars, mid-century modern, as well as the furniture, the whole theme. Yep. Mark's a Porsche guy. What can so, I say? <laughs> long time Porsche guy, 914 driver and owner among other Porsches. So again, come visit Mark when you're here in Cincinnati and check out this great store. Saturday night is the hangar party during Concord weekend. As you can see, great selection of cars. Fun catching up with everyone. <laughs> it's gonna be a wet Concord Sunday morning. Here we are, nevertheless, Judging the race car class should be a lot of fun. I can't wait to get started.
one of the great things about judging a concours like this are the people that you get to meet. And some of the fellow judges come from all over the industry. A lot of them retired. Speaking to Dick Ruzzin this morning, he's a retired GM designer. Now, boy, just stories they can tell about the cars they created. It's so much fun. Really love that. Rain came out, and there's really not much you can do about that, but you can see it didn't really affect too many people's enthusiasm for the event. So, great show, Cincinnati. Great to be back. Thanks to the car owners who take the cars out and share them with the public. Really appreciate that. Have a great show, Jay and Nicole. See you next time. <laughs> that looks like a lot of fun, I have to admit, even though it's rainy. That looked like a great time. I agree. Uh, can we talk about Mr. Ray Schaefer's improvement once again? Every single video, he gets better. Uh, there was a couple, I made a couple notes here. There was a silver GT2 that they showed at, at, at there that was on the grass. Nothing specific about that particular car, but that's a twin to the one that Mark uh, Brazil uh, crashed on the way over to Radford oh. <laughs> back in the old 70s show days. Okay, good <laughs> it visual. Was such a rare car, a rare uh, limited edition car. Uh, and then there was an orange M3. I'm going to bring that up only because that is the Lime Rock Edition M3, mm -hmm. 92 M3. Okay. And then the last thing, of course, since we saw a DeLorean there, I would be remiss if I didn't mention again, please go uh, rent or buy Framing John DeLorean on all the streaming services or go see it if it's in your local theater. It is uh, highly recommended from this friend of the DeLorean family as well as the actual DeLorean family, which probably holds a little bit more weight. Uh, it's the first time they have ever uh, participated uh, and or given their sort of seal of approval and, and anything uh, that's been released because this is the first time that they've actually this gotten the first to one. get the real story out. It's been a, enough time and most of the people involved are dead or just whatever, no, you know, not playing anymore. Um, I'm glad it's highly, all Highly place. recommend. Yeah, it's very interesting. Alec Baldwin plays John DeLorean. It's, uh, it's, a, it's good. It's good. Highly recommend it. Mrs. Ryan, that brings me to the question that's on everyone's mind. <laughs> What's going on, Mrs. Ryan? Well, I'm trying something new today, FYI. There's very few words on my card, so I'm hoping my memory kicks in. I just want you to know we're all counting on you. Pressure's on. No, it's not. You're good. me. You're good. There is a town in the Netherlands that is petitioning to officially have no time like be a land without time they're near the arctic circle it's called uh, it's a place called Summeroy. i had to look up how to say that <laughs> um but th during the winter if uh, they don't get sun and during the sun summer the sun doesn't set so they're already like a little wacky it about sounds like even anyway. more extreme than uh, alaska it's probably further even up than alaska i always think of that movie uh that movie i can't think of insomnia insomnia <laughs> yeah. where they, they go he goes up to try to solve a murder up in alaska and he's he gets all crazy wonked out because it's like you know whatever your circadian rhythm gets thrown off instantly and this is a fishing town and a tourist destination yeah, i think if you're used to it i guess you probably acclimate pretty quickly but you know coming from whatever regular life and going to that it's pretty nuts so i could understand the reasoning for it but then then what do you do how does how does one yeah, whatever. That's a whole other thing. I guess well, it's an experiment. Maybe we'll find out. We'll see if it actually works. But they're like, this is how we live normally. So people just, when you come here to visit, like, this is just how it is. Like, people play soccer to in the oh, morning sometimes. Oh, I see. So they're fine. It's almost for other people to understand them better when they come and visit, yeah. et cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, let go. Sounds like, <laughs> sounds like the, the, the takeaway there is just let go. Yeah. That's a good takeaway. Um Best Buy is officially the Geek Squad at Best Buy. Yeah. They're officially Apple proprietors. Like they can fix Apple products. Oh, they're certified now. That might be the wrong word. Sorry. Yes, but they're. A, it's a new partnership with Apple that Apple is saying, "Here's the thing. We're doing the best we can. We've got stores in as many states as possible, but there's a bunch where they don't, like Vermont and Montana oh, and sure. Wyoming and stuff. Yeah. And so they've really they're taking it. To, they're like, go to Best Buy." Their official Apple products and replacement pieces and yeah. stuff. Yeah, so. I mean, it makes sense. You can buy stuff uh, from Apple at X at uh, Best Buy, so that makes sense. You should be able to service it there. Yeah, nice. I think so too. So, go to Best Buy. 
Did they come to your house still? Like the Geek Squad used to come to you. I think, think the Geek Squad like still does. Beatles and they were made up like cop cars and stuff. I believe the Geek Squad will still go to your house. Cool. Um, okay, this is super neat to me because I'm an advertising nerd. Um, the real... <laughs> It's really happening. Um, the Real Men of Genius was a campaign in the late 80s, early 90s that Miller did. Yeah, I remember it being late, I'm early 2000s is what I remember myself. The Real Men of Genius. It was Budweiser, wasn't it? It was Miller, oh, Miller from okay. what I read, and it was 80s gotcha. and 90s. But they're bringing it back now. I wonder if what I saw was already a bringing it back. Maybe, Got it. Okay. quite possibly. Uh, Miller's doing an Internet Heroes of Gen- Genius that they're putting out audio only this year on YouTube. Hmm. So they're bucking every system possible, so I just love it. Um, it sounds neat. But I remember it. They were always, it was very comical, and they were all written, and it was all voiceover, the ones I remember. They were on the radio or yeah. whatever, and it was, you know, real man of genius, and it was good for you, parking attendant guy who, you know, whatever, smokes while using co- It doesn't matter what the joke was, but was that, is that what we're talking about? The same yeah, thing? they're, they're <laughs> bringing it back funny. with the internet. They're like the Snapchat hero that real puts filters on everything. <laughs> yeah, it's perfect. All right, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, so uh, that sounds super fun. Um, and then lastly, there was a super neat thing in New York with subway, subway riders. I don't know if you saw the video, but I watched no. it this morning. It's hilarious. Some guy who's probably homeless came on and walked between subway cars, but he didn't have a shirt on, but he had a blaring speaker that was playing Backstreet Boys. I want it that way. And I all of that way. And that's Tell what everyone. Why. Yeah, okay. Got that's it. That's what everyone on the car did. It would turn into a sing along. <laughs> and just an awesome, like one of those moments in New York is, is, subways. I, that I hope this turns out to be an art piece or an art installation and not just a homeless guy. Or even if it is, whatever. I like that they're pulling people together doing good That's shit. what I loved. It was like one of those situations that you're on a subway and you can like blow your brains out or you can join in. And they all had a blast. And it, the love and the fun coming off that train must have just been palpable everywhere because I got it. So funny. On the heels of what we watched last night, we watched, there's an HBO show called High Maintenance. It's about a... <laughs> I guess it's about a weed dealer, right? And he's just going to all these different places in New York. Very, very funny show. Uh, 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 But there was a specific thing where there was something had happened in New York. and It was a fictitious event, but a 9-11 type event had happened in New York. And everybody was, you know, ill at ease. And uh, there was all these different people in the subway. And and there was a kid bouncing a balloon balloon back and forth. But what it ended up doing was what was an annoyance for a few minutes eventually got the entire train together where they all were keeping the balloon off the, and it, t- it just brought everybody together it was a very nice moment and it sounds very similar to what you're talking about so, yeah well done mrs ryan thanks oh that's him. <laughs> what's going on well done mrs ryan oh my goodness gracious thank you sir that how do you feel doing it that way I thought it was exponentially better because you weren't relying on the card. You were using your brain. When my brain's working, that's awesome. Otherwise, it's just terror and panic that, like, I feel every time that I'm like, I don't even know if I can read those words. So, but I'm working on it. That was damn good. Love you, Mrs. Ryan. Thanks. Uh, Let's take a quick break. We'll get Chip Chinnery in here in a few minutes. Chip Chinnery, actor, comedian, multifaceted guy. He's got some stock tips for us even, maybe. (laughs) I don't know. He's a financial guy. Going to be sitting in that chair when we get back right after this. More to come. Everybody good? Yeah. With that, we are back with Chip Chinnery. Hi, Chip Chinnery. Hello, guys. How you doing, man? I'm well, thank you. Thanks, Thanks. for having me. Thank you for being, for being here. Thank you for being here. Uh, a couple things have come up even since you uh, were in the bathroom during the break. Uh, just th- This just in. You This just in. This <laughs> Fresh off. You are from Cincinnati. That clip was done in Cincinnati, and you knew all the locations in that movie. Yeah, I was like, wait, that the park is Alt Park, which is right in Hyde Park. I know exactly where it is. Been many parties there. Um, <laughs> and Lunkin Airport. I'm pretty sure that was Lunkin Airport. So sure. Uh, that's my uh, my dad was a flight enthusiast, so oh. he used to buy and sell uh, used airplanes, kind of like used cars, but with airplanes. Really? He's more than an enthusiast, doesn't it? <laughs> well, he used to fly. He used to and he started flying in college and. Oh wow! He flew for a while, but then he kind of didn't. When he, uh, as far I didn't know that he really, I knew he liked to fly, but he wasn't flying when I was around. And then um, for my 16th birthday, he, he, I was 15 something. He said, well, "Would you like to take flying lessons?" And I said, "Sure." I don't know. So I did. And on my 16th birthday, 
I went down to the airport. I'd been I'd, I had like 15 hours worth of flying instructions. Okay. You need 40. And, yeah, for the privates, but to solo you needed I think 15 if that's That's correct. Is that okay. I believe so. I yeah, think like, that's even the same. Yeah, I think I had like 15 or 19 hours. So on my birthday, I went down to the airport, jumped in the plane, did a touch and go with my instructor, and then uh, they said, "Go for it." And then I took it up, did a loop, came back down. I'm like, and looking back at it, I'm like, that's insane. Most student drivers don't get their license at 16, their yeah. driver's license. So that was something On the that, day, you know what I mean? Their birthday, that's amazing. Yeah, so that's something I have in common with Neil Armstrong. As we approach the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, right, uh, he got his, he learned how to fly before he learned how to drive. So Neil and I are wow. basically the same guy. Same person. <laughs> same person. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, it's a delight to have Neil Armstrong here. You're I welcome. had no idea. Thank you. One small oh, step. There it is. <laughs> Glad you got there. Um, all right. Well, one thing that jumped out at me specifically because it was a parallel. It sounds like we have quite a few. But yeah. um, after growing up in Cincinnati, you spent some time in con- Connecticut? Mm-hmm. I'm from Connecticut. We're in Connecticut. I'm from a little town called Wilton, which is just outside that's, that's where the they, city. Yeah, that's... Uh, I, I uh, New got Canaan, a job. Ridgefield, yeah. Wilton, that whole area there. That's a nice area. I, I, I lived in uh, Stratford, Connecticut in 1988. I went to broadcasting school in Stratford. Did you? <laughs> well, we're the same guy. We're I'm the Neil same Armstrong guy. No, 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 no. Go ahead. So then I, I worked in Bridgeport, Connecticut at the bank called the Bank Mart, and they, they hired me. It was kind of a fluky thing. Oh, I was, okay. So this wasn't television in Connecticut. No. This okay. was, uh, I worked, I got out of, I graduated from Miami University in Oxford, Ohio in 86. Worked at the CBS affiliate in Cincinnati as a cameraman. I went to Oxford. You hear that? Ooh, Not bad. Smart. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, you started as a local cameraman? I started as local cameraman. And, okay. Uh, did that till uh, February of '88. Then, during that time as a cameraman, I had edited a video that I shot my senior year in college. Of course, we're talking about the Delta Time Capsule, aka From Here to Fraternity. Oh, everybody a knows. Day by day, year in the life about? documentary. Sure. Hello. It was 80 hours that I cut down to a tight 14. Because <laughs> you can't not have the hours. soccer game between the Fisai's and the Delts. Yeah. So, oh, wow. Yeah. So while I, because it's so important. College is so important at that age. Like, oh, I got I to gotta save all this. And so I, while I worked as a cameraman, in the six hours that I didn't have to work during the day, I edited this thing. And it took like eight months and made a special and... Well, all right. So you actually went and did something with it. I'm, I'm thinking more on the lines of when I was a, uh, I was a terrible student. So in uh-huh. junior year of high school, they started putting me in internship programs during that because I wanted to work doing this stuff, doing yeah. TV. Yeah. So they put me at a, at a local TV station. So that's where I literally learned how to operate a camera, do li- all the different things. Did mm-hmm. you pick up on that stuff as well? Or were you yeah. just getting through it to go do something else? Uh, college, getting through college, or the TV stuff specifically, oh. the uh, TV station. Was that a job you liked and wanted to go, or was it just? It was just something I wanted me? to learn because oddly enough, I had got a degree in business psychology, <laughs> and on the side, I always did little video projects because I was into comedy and I shot a video here and there. So when I got out of school with my psych degree, business psych, <laughs> I talked to my friend who I'd shot video projects with, who was working at the WCPO in Cincinnati, and I said, uh, "Yeah, any jobs?" He goes, "No, nah, nothing available." And then, like, two weeks later, he goes, yeah, I just got promoted. Somebody, spot opened up, so you want to do it? And I'm like, sure. And I didn't find out until years later that he thought I had a mass comm degree, which I did not have. I had my oh business God. psych. <laughs> He's like, you don't have a mass comm degree? No. I never <laughs> lied. Now, no. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, I learned how to do the camera because I didn't learn it in college, so I right. wanted to learn how to do it. So I, I wanted to learn how cameras and lights worked and the, and the Chiron machine. All of and that I, stuff. I got in a little trouble once. Uh, on purpose or was it accidental misspelling because mm. <laughs> I got in a little trouble too but mine were accidents yes uh, did it get on air yes oh. also, all of our shit was live so it all, everything was on air <laughs> take it down take down E3 oh. yeah yeah. You type yeah. that check it check it yeah mine was because Dr. I, Penis is not going to be here today you know. uh. mine was because I was I needed to have Chirons on my Delt time capsule Right, I needed to have to know who these people were. This sure. is what's happening. And I worked at a state-of-the-art <laughs> facility, so I uh, over out overnight, I had it rigged where I stood at the back in the control room, and I had a string going from here to about ten yards away to a fader bar on the tech board. So you can do it. So yourself. I faded in the Chiron. Steve Schuler faded it out, switched it off here, in and out. well, I had loaded up the Chiron and the Quantel so big that it almost crashed. <laughs> This is uh, like Weekend at Bernie style. 
Hi, Bernie. Yeah. <laughs> so they were just like, uh, yeah, so uh, and then they realized it was me, and I got a firm scolding. But the Dell Time capsule got finished and got in the hands of many people. Wow. And uh, from that, I, I'd sent out letters to people asking, uh, hey, buy your kid a video for Christmas. And one of the people was a, oh, wow. the CEO of this bank in Connecticut called the Bank Mart. He wrote back saying, oh, this is the kind of person we need. And I was like, oh. holy shit, man. <laughs> yeah. Are you kidding? So that turned into, I wrote him back a letter. Like I was like, I'm not going to work at a bank. I have no interest in working at a bank. And I wrote him back, oh, I'll do anything. i got to get out of here. I'll, I'll fill the water in the little spongy things that they dip their fingers in to count money. It's for the fingers. And I'm writing this to the CEO. So I'm, ex- you know, I'm just like expecting a letter to come back saying, well, thank you for sending it, but it will keep you in mind. But he wrote back, one, yeah, we want to hire you to be the PR director for the bank. And I was like, what? Was it because, you, because of your outreach? Yes. So I'd, I'd sent out the letters. He thought I was a personable guy. He saw, oh, he has a background in stand-up comedy. You He's worked in television. You represented yourself well. I thought I was just being flippant and silly in the letter back to him, saying, thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Freeman. But I, uh, but I was kidding. Like, oh, I'll do anything. I didn't, I'm didn't. i not going to work at a bank. I didn't know they had PR directors at banks. You yeah, know, I wouldn't so. either. So that all happened, and I moved to wow. Connecticut. All right, so that was not, <laughs> it wasn't the, I, not what I was no. expecting there, but very, very interesting. Holy yeah. cow. But I eventually worked there and then gave... I. Uh, mm. Did you like Connecticut? I mean, that's a weird place to live. Bridgeport is, I don't know, when yeah. I grew up, it was not a great Bridgeport place. Bridgeport is not pretty. And uh, Stratford was lovely. Uh, I lived on the banks of the Housatonic. Oh, I had sure a little in-law did. apartment off the back of Margaret and Perk's, Perkins House. Oh, shout out to the Perkins right? in Connecticut. Come on. Jeez. Right on the Housatonic. On the banks of the Housatonic. <laughs> It's right where the uh, there's like an island, and I forget the name of it, but and they had a, a boat, an old boat anchored to it, so that people on their boats could see at uh, high tide that oh, there's a sandbar right there. Oh, you don't want to hit it. And I forget people in Connecticut who were watching this. Oh, that's that place. <laughs> so that was right outside my uh, my window. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. You're, I, there's a few of those in Long Island Sound. Right. It's not. Yeah, it's not yeah. easy. It's not easily navigable waters. Yeah, so I didn't know either. I was like, what? There's, there's a boat anchored out there. They should get rid of it. Why would that boat be out there? I wasn't very smart. You're not really smart till like 25. All right, well, then what the heck happened to you that you then got into acting and got really into acting? Yeah. I and mean, your IMDb is very, very long. I'm very impressive. On the very IMDb. impressive. Big, very big deal. <laughs> well, I, I keep going back. My, my comedy and acting career started in 81 when I was 16. Oh, wow. I did stand up at. Uh, a bar in Cincinnati called DWI, which gives you an idea. Back in the 80s, we didn't care. We made jokes about DWI. It's a bar called DWI. And Out here, it's DUI, but we're, in but back it was then, DWI. I think it, was it? Driving while intoxicated is what it was back yeah, in the day. Back yeah, back in the day, back in the old days. Yeah. Nowadays, there's so many more ways to get high. I think they yeah. expanded it. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I started doing stand-up then when I was 16, did about a dozen open mics that summer before my senior in high school. And throughout high that's school, that's every week. That's three month summer. That's yeah. every week, Mister. That's I was, commitment. I was pounding the pavement, so I did that. Uh, and over over about a seven year period, I did probably a hundred shows. So I wasn't really dedicated to it, but I kind of did shows through college and high school and college, and then out of well, I had the Delta time capsule to edit, so I slowed down in eighty six, eighty seven. Just one period there. Yeah, but then I said in eighty seven, I was like, I want to do this full time. And by then, there were plenty of clubs. So I started doing stand-up open mics. I won Funniest Person in Cincinnati oh. in February of 88. Not the whole oh. year. I just won the month. Oh, my goodness. Well, once Jim Villanucci won January, then it was opened up. You know, he's out of the picture. So now I won that field. and said, I'm going to Connecticut. But I, I still wanted to do <laughs> I still wanted to do stand-up and open mics. So I said, I wonder if there are any clubs in Connecticut. They offered me a job there. I got to go do a Treehouse mics. Comedy Club. The Treehouse Comedy Club, Brad Oxelrod's place. And um, so this is that jo- still there to this day? Uh, some version is, I think. They it's used not- to move it around to different yeah. bars and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I've been in communication a little bit with Brad because I've been writing a little bit of my a memoir of my. Uh, that's oh. another. Oh my! So, but I'll finish this topic on the uh, the uh, what got me to Connecticut. Um, my college roommate Steve McDonald said, "Oh, my friend Tom Hertz is doing stand up." in the Westport area. He's, he went to high school with me, so I'll put you in touch. And so I talked to Tom. He's like, yeah, come on up. I'll introduce you to Brad. And uh, Tom's become a big shot. He's, he created Rules of Engagement, the David Spade oh, sure, show, yeah. and he's oh, a big neat. TV writer. Yeah. yeah. So, that was a big show. Yeah, he's done a lot over the years. Is he from Connecticut? He's from uh, the, that area, whatever. Oh, no kidding. 
Westport, I think, is where that's he's from. Right next to my town, yeah. Yeah, that's where Paul Newman lived, and a yeah. lot, a lot, a lot of celebrities. Yeah, so that was uh, that's what got me there. It was Hertz saying, "Yeah, you can. I'll introduce you to Brad." So I started doing open mics, which is also strange because you had to audition for Peter <laughs> during the day. Guys, why did you do that? <laughs> so it's like, oh, you want to do open mics? Well, come over at five and get on stage in front of Peter Cohen, and you do what? I have to audition to open mics, and he's like. Peter's like, yeah, man. Um, he said to me, I remember this day, he's like, some guys just weren't meant to do stand-up. Wow. And so he said, I, I didn't even pass the audition to do open mic night. And then I told Hertz, and he's like, what? And so he called Brad, and he's like, this guy's really funny. Let him go. He's the funniest man in Cincinnati. And yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. February, February 88. February sure. was his time. <laughs> so that got me to Connecticut, and that got me doing open mics. And then... Uh, so it was the phone call, though, that, that he said, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, so I in. got to be able to go back and do open mics without i didn't have to audition a second time that oh, really God. is something i'd never <laughs> heard of that ever before or since or it's usually one or the other you audition to be in the club or you just <laughs> go do open mic yeah i'm not a crazy person so even if i get on and i'm horrible then you go well you can't come back but why open mics yeah that's what it's you for. expect some of them to not yeah. be well, as who great knew? As the treehouse comedy other. club had such a high standard back yeah. in the day yeah. that's maybe you know maybe we all should appreciate that maybe that should be the way it is Keep the riffraff from getting on the stage. That's the only one I can think of, though, in Connecticut. There was Bananas and Poughkeepsie right over bananas the Bananas and Poughkeepsie. I love the, the At the Holiday Inn on Route 9. Yes. October 89. That's when I did it. Oh, my. A young David Tell emceed for me. In his, Again, David In his Tell. khakis and his blazer. No kidding. It's your second time bringing him up. Do you know David Tell? I drop David Tell's name whenever I can. That's a book on me. <laughs> you brought up a great story. You asked me if I had worked on Saturday Night Live right. because of something you had seen on the show. And the answer is yes, of course. You've got a great SNL story, but more specifically, you're in what I call the Chris Farley chair because Chris Farley tossed oh, himself, yes. rolled out of the chair, off the set a couple times. Yes. And always did something spectacularly physical. I'm not going to do any. I'm not going to do a cartwheel like Chris. Oh. Well, None of that. Oh, that's what I was leading up to. <laughs> <I would> plug, <laughs> handstand, so go ahead, Chip. for a handstand. Back off this thing. <laughs> um, you've got a pretty <clears throat> interesting SNL story, considering you were only there as a as a, as a viewer, right? Yes, I uh, saw the show once in 99, but then in 2003, I was shooting a commercial for Sierra Mist. <laughs> I was a guy in a kilt. We were a Scottish band. Like, they're called a band. Okay. Scottish bunch Scottish. of guys in a parade. <laughs> Bagpipes, right? Bagpipes. There we go. Actually, Pat Oswalt was in the end of it. He, he was the guy, too. Um but anyway, I was in this in the we band with uh, with, <laughs> with uh, Kevin Farley, and Kevin is a younger brother to Chris, I think, younger. Yeah. And uh, so, but they look so similar. Their yeah. physicality is very similar. Yeah. And so we're there like on a Thursday or Friday shooting this thing, and and uh, it's like, oh, I'm going to go uh, to SNL, and Kevin's like, yeah, so am I. Like, maybe I should go with you instead of my friend T. Sean's <laughs> tickets where I'd sit up there. Maybe I go with Kevin and we Be got the, the red carpet. Or... We went around back. We just hung out in the lobby. I mean, in the, uh, the hallway, the hallway. Yeah, so the like right away. Yeah. Right away from where the host comes out and stands and talks to you. So we stood out there, hung around. This is 2003. I was just going to ask you 2003. Okay. <clears throat> so the green room upstairs is already closed. They closed that after nine 11. Did they? Right. So you were, you were, you were just hanging out we were just literally hanging out. where all of the crew, all of the makeup people, security and the cast. Yeah. There's no uh, divider. You're just with them. during. Yeah. This. We were just yeah. hanging out. And I think Kevin looked enough like a Farley that they're oh, with it must be Kevin Farley. Well, we should say this too. I'm, I don't know who was there for your show, but generally Dan Aykroyd and all sorts of famous uh, uh, huh. SNL people yeah. are, are all around and in that hallway at the time, often most shows. Yeah, I don't remember, but we had, uh, it was cool because um, we're, st we're sitting there and then all of a sudden I see oh, Keenan, we meet Keenan, we meet Tina Fey, and they're in the middle of the show. And it's like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, 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 cool, cool, cool. Talk to you later. Okay, yeah, cool. And then, uh, and then Chris Parnell. Get my text? Yeah, hey, man. <laughs> Chris Parnell's there, he, and this is a show. This was his first show back, if memory serves. That he he left the show, or he was asked to leave the show. He, he got fired, but then they brought him back. <laughs> this is his first show back. Yeah, it's like a, never unheard of, right? Yeah. I don't think that, I think he's the only guy. What about Meadows? He got fired, and then OJ happened, and he came back because perfect guy is to that play true? OJ. He did get fired because I, I was think there when so. Meadows was there, and he was just the longest running guy at the time. I would bet a hundred dollars that he was let go at the end of the season, and then OJ happened because that was June of '94 when OJ went on the slow speed chase. So then they might have gone, dude. So they brought him back for seven more years. <laughs> I think so, and someone should confirm this. But I that's I would bet one hundred dollars. There we go. <clears throat> but Parnell, anyway, Parnell was there at that show, and he's like, "Hey, Chip, you uh, the band Outcast is going to come on. You want to go see oh it?" Oh my gosh! And and so Kevin and I are like. 
Sure. And we walk out onto the floor when the band plays. And we're just standing in front of them on the Saturday Night Live floor, just watching the band. And then we left. Such a famous room. Uh, it was great. It was because I uh, love that show. But with the energy in the room, right? Oh, it's, it's amazing. Gosh. It, yeah. It's fantastic. You already came up through television, so you probably knew it was going to be smaller than you thought and all that stuff. Right? Yep. Yeah. And, you already uh, knew that stuff. Because, you know, I worked at Channel 9 in Cincinnati. I, did, I, I like to bring it up as often Keep as I can. that <laughs> as I can. <laughs> All right. Uh, bouncing around, if that's yeah, all right. Yeah, sure. Uh, you're, the, the, some of the biggest ones I noticed on there. Friends, Seinfeld. Yes. What What were you on those shows? Because I feel like everybody knows those shows so yes. well. Certainly I was in, we uh, do. Yeah, for, uh, for I See Your Door. I think. That oh, yeah, that's right. Part. The yeah. Friends Door. Yeah. Mrs. Ryan's Christmas present yeah. two years ago. You got the thing. Uh, I was in the Friends episode where uh, Joey worked at the museum where uh, Ross did. And the episode had... Joey was a tour guide, so he had a blue coat, and then jo- and De- Ross was the doctor in the white coat. And the white coats and the blue coats didn't sit together. It was the, the cafeteria the issues and everything. Exactly. Yes. Sherry. We don't Sherry talk- uh, Shepard yeah. was in it, and this, they were loving her Good that you. week. Good for you. Nice pull, yes. And I Sherry. love that show. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's a particular I'm good on episode. right after her, so <laughs> it's like we people go back and forth saying telling truths about themselves, and she says, yeah. "My name's whatever, and these aren't real," and takes off her jacket, and Ross is like, "Oh, hmm, thanks, Rhonda," and then I jump up, "I'm Scott." Okay, okay, Scott, I need to flip the light switch on and off 17 times before I leave a room where my family will die. OCD. So I got that in there, and then then they go to commercial, and I was like, oh, "Cool." God, that's funny. So sometimes you see it in, in syndication. Sometimes they'll have it. And sometimes they won't have my part. And I realize, oh, because it's 30 seconds. So maybe commercial. they chop it and put another commercial mm-hmm. in. Holy cow. Sometimes I look like an extra. Sometimes <laughs> I look fantastic. Wow. And after the, after the uh, scene, I came off. I was so fired up because I got to have a laugh line. And I was standing around off camera. And Terry Gar is there. She was in the episode. <gasps> She was my all time. She favorite. was. Oh, yeah, she played Phoebe's mom. She always yeah played Phoebe's mom on that show. Oh. And I said hi, Terry. I'm Chip Chinnery. Nice to meet you. She said you're not Chip. You're Scott. And you need to leave the light switch on 17 times before you leave room <laughs> or your family will die. I'm like, how does she know that? She's, she's so good. Oh, oh, she's so good. She was fantastic. God, that's a great. I didn't. Oh, that yeah. was a little bonus for me. I'm a huge Terry Gar oh, yeah. fan, and obviously with the Dave and 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 oh, the, MS. She was the whole, so the whole pop- Oh, that's right. She is mm-hmm. the MS. And she had MS all those appearances with Dave, and she hadn't come really? out yet. So when you go back and watch, somebody put together a whole thing of like all of them. When you go back and watch, you can see oh. there's deterioration there, and she's wobbling over to whatever. Oh. It's one of those, I, I only recognize it because I live it. Yeah. And it just it just makes me love her so much more for everything she was able to still put out, even the years where she was ailing. I didn't I didn't know that at all. I always loved her on Letterman, because they oh, you know the had best. a chemistry. It was so Such fantastic. Such a chemistry. Do you think they ever dated? I would think... How, they should have, or, should you know, have. at the yeah, time, I don't definitely. know if they were related, we had relationships going on, but they had great chemistry. Great chemistry. And maybe it would have just blown up at a dinner, and like, I hate you, but oh, yeah, it was perfect on, uh, on the show, you know. <laughs> um, all right, show. Seinfeld then. So Seinfeld, I was in the third to last episode called The Maid, and it was uh, actually the last episode that they did in the studio. Uh, the Maid was where Jerry was dating his maid. And she wasn't really cleaning. What am so. I paying for? Yeah, exactly. I didn't realize that was so late in the run because yeah. then it was like the Puerto Rican Day, and then it was the absolutely. Finale. So that's right. why it was the last studio when Puerto Rican Day parade, and then the finale, the finale show. So this was the show at all everybody wanted to go to. All the muckety mucks were hanging out. Last time we're gonna have the apartment and everything. Yeah, and I was in the I play. I was an office office worker at Kruger Industries. Oh my gosh, uh, industrial metal finishing. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So to me, it was Coco. Hey, that was the episode. Yeah. Oh, geez, really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I got to say Gammy and Coco, and there was one line I said I ordered turkey sandwich. So at one point, I was the only thing on Seinfeld saying turkey sandwich. Is that the same one where he's got to have the mole removed? Is that all the thing? No, with, that's with a different one. And everything? Okay. This is one where um, they started. Uh, oh, he needs a nickname. He he decided he wanted to be called T Bone. T Bone. And then, uh, <laughs> so George else gets it. sneaks in T Bone, and then Damon Jones, <laughs> another right. friend of mine, has uh, he's on the show. <laughs> And he's like, George orders a T-bone, and then Dame's like, T-bone? That sounds great. I want to have a T-bone. T-bone. We should call you T. <laughs> exactly. And then George's like, no, no, no. I'm T-bone. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I that was the final, the final in-studio one. That's a big, that's a big deal. That's and, a big deal. And they have, uh, they have a shot. If you ever watch the clip shows that they do. Love the clip shows. And they play this, this is the time of your life, whatever sure. that song is. Well, that uh, was part of the finale, too. Was it? Yeah. I know at the end they had this montage. Maybe it was a clip show. Maybe it was, the, I don't know. But uh, one of the clip shows, 
had a montage, and then at the end they take a shot of the four taking a bow, and that was from my show. Oh, cool. And then they, because I have a photograph of pretty much oh, exactly. Oh, it's the last space. curtain call in the set. Correct. Of course, right, right. And then right. Uh, they, they kind of pull out slowly, and uh, you see the cast behind, and then they fade to black just before me. And the only reason Marshall. that matters <laughs> is because if they kept me, I'd have made some money. Yeah. <laughs> I'd have made about, to this date, about $20,000. Mm. Because that's what I made on doing that Seinfeld. Because it keeps running, and yeah. it's been running for 20 years. Well, and they keep buying it. Hulu, Netflix, whatever. <clears throat> oh, yeah. That's great. But that was a... I was so excited, because to me, that was like being on MASH. You know, like, I'm sure somebody's like, hey, Grandpa's on MASH. He's playing an MP. And I got to be on a show that I really liked. And it's just a tiny part. Knew. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so fun. I was like, this is it. This is great. I love this show. And I got to be on. For me, there wasn't really a show before that other than Cheers, and then before that, MASH. Yeah, I agree. All in the Family maybe was in there, of course, too. And I never watched that. It was, I was too young. My folks were like, you don't need to watch that. So <laughs> I didn't really. I watched Cheers. I loved Cheers. Loved Cheers. And uh, MASH before then. Uh, another show you were on, you were actually on my favorite episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. Oh, really? I love the episode. Uh, do you want to tell people? Sure. Everybody knows the show. The Car Salesman. That's the one. Yeah. Yeah. I was one of the people buying a car from Larry. <sighs> Larry's trying to sell Toyotas and right around the corner actually it was at North Hollywood Toyota at least story wise he uh it was yeah it was strange because you auditioned for that show and uh, they say I remember a casting coming up said did you get the script I said you mean the piece of paper that says <laughs> you buy a car from Larry yeah there's no <laughs> there's no, script. no dialogue That's written it. right yeah so I remember going to the audition Larry's there and uh, Gavin Plone and I and uh so we're just kind of riffing and, and he's trying to sell me a car and I heard the best you know you want to make Larry look bad so that was uh, that. My whole goal was to make him look like a jerk, and that, my thing was like, <laughs> "So how much is this?" And he goes, "Uh, it's a sixteen thousand sticker says twenty five. I was like, "Oh, good, I got one zinger in there where I made him look bad," and I think that's what got me hired. So then when I did the show, it was like, "Oh, I got to, got to be on that show," and that was the season two premiere show. Oh, is that right? Which is here's another fun fact. Do you know when it aired? You couldn't possibly. You could, but. You won't. On the 9-11. Yeah, I was going to say, but the fact, the way that you just laid that out, I yeah, had a Yeah, I kind of, big a softball hunch. coming in. Yeah, it yeah, wasn't it, when Kennedy was killed, so yeah. I'm figuring probably. <laughs> <laughs> and it was funny because I did a, an episode of the Goldbergs, and I gave this little tidbit to Jeff Garland recently, and he's like, hey, that show always aired on Sunday, and 9-11 was a Tuesday. And I was like, listen. <laughs> don't say that. So then I went home. I checked. That and was what it, so impressive of him, though, yeah. too. And so the thing is, they used they had. I checked my journal He's because right, though, I used to keep track. Yeah. So what they done is they had a, a preview or a sneak peek, and they showed a couple shows on that Tuesday. No kidding. So I was like, whew, I wasn't crazy, and I was right about that. But I'm not going to correct Mr. Garland. <laughs> oh, that's so funny though that you that you did have. Uh, that's wild. yeah, yeah. Uh, what was the experience though working with those guys on that show? Well, it was pretty cool. I've heard from everybody, all the actors, that it's just it's a blast because yeah. it's so low low pressure. Yeah. And uh, I, I kind of come from the yes and school of improv. So mm. at one point, we're in the car, which didn't air. We're in the car, and Larry's like, this is a fantastic car. You get the car. And I'm like, on and on. I go, okay, I'll buy it. And he goes, I don't want it to go that way. Don't, don't buy the car. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so like, all right. But That's then, so funny. I just remember one point, he's like, this fucking work of art. Yeah. <laughs> or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's all flustered. It's yeah. fucking perfect, this car. It's <laughs> fucking work of art. Yeah, that was great. That was exactly right. That was my scene. Um, all right, bouncing around. Arsenio, yeah. you had some, some stuff to do with Arsenio? I did a couple sketches on Arsenio. The, 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 when Arsenio came back? The reboot. Okay. Where I, somebody, a friend of a friend said, you take, oh, Arsenio's got a show. You, to get to that show, you go down the 101 and turn right on 1989. <laughs> oh, on, pretty on good. On 1989. Pretty good. That was fun. <laughs> I little, wanted the show to be a little bit better than it was, and I feel like if it had just if they had simply gone back and done the old show, yeah. I think it would have gone. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know? Do know. you have any backstory? I on don't that? have a ton of backstory. I, I was happy to do it. I did a couple sketches. I got to uh, play his executive producer, and somebody actually thought oh, that I funny. was an executive producer recently. If someone I knew says, "Well, so you've done a lot of production stuff too." I go, "What do you mean?" Well, didn't you work on Arsenio? I go, no, I played the executive producer. I wasn't the executive producer. Somebody told me that recently, too, so I have yeah. a feeling it might be the same person. Uh-oh. <laughs> Fed me the same bullshit. <laughs> um, yeah, so no, I was just an so actor. you played the EP, okay. Yeah, I played in a couple sketches, did that, and did, uh, I was, uh, I played um, a guy. All I know is I was pantsless. I had to walk around in a coat and tie, and I had a... Uh, As all good executives are. Yeah, some sort of cod piece, I think it's called. Holy smokes. And I wore a robe before the shoot, and I took the robe off, and... 
Bagpipes? No bagpipes. No bagpipes. Okay. <laughs> but it was, uh, <laughs> it was some bit. <clears throat> <laughs> With that, then, I'm going to jump over to Jay Leno, then, because you did some Tonight Show stuff. I did Tonight yeah, Show. And I heard you produced that show as well. <laughs> <laughs> I executive produced that one. Then that's what got me the other job, executive producing uh, Arsenio. Um, yeah, I did the, uh, I met the casting director there, and did a, I did about a half a dozen sketches. One of them was live on Jay's 50th birthday, which is great. I got okay, the, uh, now you're helping me. Okay, I was going to ask which incarnation of the jay yeah. leno was it it was a tonight jay. show and it was the first jay leno tonight show yes it was in 2000 i think okay and i got to play a few different things through uh, the half a dozen that i did but the most memorable was being live during the show and it was like you know dangerous products and, this, and, <laughs> and i was knee hands and i sat on the stage they had me covered in a sheet and then Jay took the sheet off. This next thing is called knee hands. And it was like I had these hands on my knees that would drive the car while I drank coffee and I talked remember. on my phone. I remember That's that. a riot. Yeah. So that was fun. Totally. So it was like a new product, a fake yeah. new product. Yeah, fake new products. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and I got to do a patch madam once. I played a John who was getting solicited by uh, Allie Wentworth. Oh, I love nice. Allie Instead Wentworth. of Patch Adams, it's Patch Madam. So she was, she was hitting on you. You think you're gonna get a little something, and then she's just doing clown faces and. She's Mrs. Stephanopoulos now. That's correct. I just used to remember when she was a female comic, you know. Yeah. Host. Now she's special. Wow. I liked her. Yeah, I liked her too. Very nice. I liked her too. (laughs) I didn't know her as a comedian. Really? She was a a talk show host too. Yeah. In the '90s, she had a talk show where she co-hosted with somebody, a Regis and Kelly type show. I can't remember the guy. I vaguely remember that. I feel like she it was. Would be it was fun literally like, like blah 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 with you know Mike and Allie yeah. or something like that. Yeah. I think it might have just been called Mike and Allie or whoever the other guy was. Okay. You know what I mean? Like a Michael Berger yeah. type. Not I him. I vaguely remember the yeah. name. And I think she was a sketch person too, wasn't she? Groundling Sounds related. Right. Sounds right. She, she was in Office Space. I remember that. Oh, really? In the very beginning of Office Space. She Great what? movie. Yeah, it is. Great movie. <laughs> I love that movie. It's fantastic. Uh, all that. Yeah, sure. Heard all that. Are they bringing you back? Because I heard all that's coming back. You mentioned Keenan before. Yeah, I had. I'd not even. I did, <laughs> I did know they're bringing all that back, <laughs> but uh, I don't know if the role of cop knocking on door is going to be required. <laughs> oh, I see. But I was just a no. Guy. You were like Officer Crumpy or something. Yeah, different. Officer Crumpy. Yeah. Yeah. Meh. Just a sketch. <laughs> just a sketch on a kid's show. And you, in those kids shows, you just grip it and rip it. I mean, it's, you can't be too big. So it's like you got a lot of. Goofy faces. Yeah, you know, I did a Zach Just and characters. Cody where they're um, it's Oh, always... they're the boats. The the, the sweet life. Sweet of life. Zach and Cody. Yeah, they, they live on a boat. Show the kids. Yeah, because the, the, the mom was like the lounge thing. singer, I think. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Things I don't know about kids. It was shows. still Kids Incorporated when I was watching Disney. That oh. was back in the eighties. Yeah, I, over the days. So and did... the Disney Channel was brand stinking new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did it. They have a Disney XD now, which I didn't know ex- existed till I did a uh, Crash and Bernstein a few years ago. What is it? What is it? Well, well the show, it's gone now, but it was a... Uh, no, I mean the uh, Disney oh. XD. It's Extreme Disney. Oh, Extreme Disney. I think Disney. it's for the tweens, like, you know, the 12, 13-year-olds. They want to get, you know, Freaking they don't want the assume. kids stuff. They want, ah. The guys so that want to go definition? skateboarding? Oh, Extreme Disney, just yeah. the XD, period. I think Extreme Disney. Um, this show was about a puppet who was like a real life. Crash was a puppet who lived with Bernstein. Well, that's bringing me up. Wilford is on here as well. Now, right. that's not on Disney, but real life. Oh, that's a right. A real life there. dog. I forgot about that. It's a real life dog that he thinks is a guy in a dog suit. Yeah. A bit. Yeah. Uh, that was an FX show, I think. Is it not yeah. on anymore? No. It oh, it was away. a good show. That was, was a good show. It was a great show. I yeah. only saw the first Who were you on that one? It. I played a doctor. Well, I didn't play it. Well, I was in this insane yeah. asylum, and uh, I pretended to be a doctor, and I would console people. And I wouldn't console them. I would make them cry. I would tell them that their loved one died. And then I would go away. And, Jen. and then I got caught once by, uh, what's his name? Um, oh, escapes me. Michael something. He's in all the Christopher Guest movies. Very funny. Very Michael t- McKeon. No. No? Some three names. Oh, uh, yeah. He, he played Letterman in the movie. Yes. Uh, Michael. Patrick. Nah, it's Michael, Michael Patrick Clark Duncan. Higgins. Anyway, John Michael Higgins. Yes, thank you. He was so funny and so great. And he he caught me, and uh, he busted me in his office as a consulting, <laughs> consoling, uh, or telling, uh, oh, "I'm sorry, uh, your mother's died." <laughs> <laughs> so that was. Fun. And he's like, "No, no, st- no. <laughs> Jelly beans are not for." Anyway, it was it was fun. All right. You're an actor, clearly, who's been... In, it, it, this, by the way, I just I picked five things out of here. There's a hundred things on there. Um, 
You're a finance guy too? Yeah. It's like a yeah. hobby. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm not I have no accreditation. I'm not a CPA. I'm not in anything. I don't have I'm just a guy. But you have an internet thing where you put out tips. I have an un- uncertified uh, <laughs> website called Chips Money Tips. Dot com. I call it my money tips in a candy coated shell. Oh. Just fun, fun, fun tips you can do because most people are horrible with money. Other people, not you guys. I but, love that quote. Right? I love that quote because most people. Whew. But uh, yeah, so I'm really good. I, I'm the guy who has his first nickel probably because I just I'm very good at holding on to the money and managing it. Still giving some away. I'm not a you know I'm not a Scrooge McScrooge, but uh, well, you told us about that house you bought 20 years ago. You did all right on that. There one. you go. You I look okay like a there. genius. Yeah, you did okay. Sometimes there. you fumble into it. Well done. Sometimes you got to thank your accountant for saying you should buy a house. Really? Okay. Makes more sense. <laughs> so yes, I've been very fortunate. But I, I thought, well, I'm going to spread some of this knowledge out there. And I thought, should I do an internet or should I do a late night TV uh, infomercial? Mm-hmm. I remember those Kevin Trudeau in the old days. And yeah. All that. Yeah. Danny Everybody's- Bonaducci. <laughs> I remember them all. Yeah, they, they used to be. I was obsessed with this stuff. So if I'm flipping around and anything looked like this, I watched it. David yeah. Bonaducci did late night infomercials. A, yeah, with a desk just like this and the whole thing. He did everything. Oh, I only know. Him, well, I know him from a bunch of stuff, but the radio, the morning show, we did. Talk about sure. Danny Bonaducci. No. Jamie and Danny, 90, 98.7 around <laughs> the corner. Yeah, I got stuck on that. The Dalts building and Warner Brothers. I'm going to yeah. move on. Dalts. Um, what was the point? I oh, boy. Good. Shoot. Oh, money tips. Yeah. Yes. So I thought oh, my buddy's like, no, you got to do a blog. The kids all do blogs. So 10 years ago, I started doing a, my blog and I made some videos and found out as you, this is, takes a lot of time. Yeah. So it's easier to type, but then that people don't like to read. Mm. So right. then you got to do this. Anyway, so. There are easier ways to do this, I'm sure. I think most people do a green screen or something. You could probably. Uh, I don't know that green screen is an easier thing. I did oh, green it? screen. Really? I found it to be because the technology is pretty good. Uh, Unless the light, it, it's great if the lighting's perfect. Even at the TV station, it was like, okay, the, we got to tweak the key before every newscast. Yeah. So it can not key out well, and you drive yourself crazy if the screen's not perfectly flat and the light's not hitting it right. You get the halo effect and all that stuff. Yeah. So if you, and you can't have frizzy hair. No, it's g- green, green yeah. frizz. Yeah. So I think this is smart. Thanks, man. You're doing is smart. <laughs> well, we had the 90s desk, so we went 90s style. Yeah. Everything is practical. They didn't have green screen in the 90s. That's right. There was no such thing. <laughs> we didn't have the color green then. It's all blue. Yeah. When I grew up, everything was monochrome. Yeah. <laughs> Both so, ways. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the way it was. It's way uh, it was. So the money thing, did you get that from the bank, or was that instilled early? Uh, I'm asking because I've always for... been one of those people who somebody else handles the money because I'm terrible with it. Yeah. I, my, just, I don't know anything about it. My, I think I got it from my folks. <laughs> really? Yeah, my my dad was a salesman. He liked the sale. I don't think he was a number cruncher. My mom was a number cruncher. She would be the person looking at the newspaper. And I'd say, "What are you looking at?" I'm trying to see how my stock did because he used to look oh, at wow. the newspaper to see how Procter and Gamble did and this stock and that stock. And so she was into that, and I just kind of I was uh, I have two sisters and. I was the guy who was interested in, oh, the dividend check came from my Procter & Gamble stock. Wow. My grandmother gave me gave us all $1,000 worth of stock when we were born, which is fantastic. Yeah. But I was like, oh, the check came. So I wanted to take it to the bank, Mom. Okay. So we deposited that in the bank, and I was into it. You know, Instead my, of going to the toy store or yeah. whatever. Wow. Yeah, Good I was like, I didn't bike. play Pac-Man because that was a quarter of play, and I don't have that kind of money. That's crazy. Yeah, it's a little weird. No, I mean, it's just so adult and so responsible in your behavior, yeah. whereas at that time you should have been... I should have been frivolous. Into Pac-Man. Yeah. yeah, and it is weird. I I know it is. I look back and it, no, I don't think it's. I, well, I think it is. I'm celebrating it oh. because I, you know what I mean. It's I, <laughs> I went the other way. I went. Yeah. I just went into creativity, and that sort of leads me into you're describing everything you do uh, professionally speaking is creative to me. Acting and comedy uh-huh. and all that stuff, writing, uh, very very creative. All of this money stuff is so left brain, analytical, yeah. logistical. Um, are, are you are you just really balanced right down the middle? You operate both, and I you're must just be. happy that way, and you're okay with that. Is that um, what it is? I guess because I, like when I was doing stand up on the road, I would I liked doing stand up, and I thought, oh, this is fun and creative. I'm gonna take pictures of the guys I work with, so I have these pictures. And then it dawned on me, well, you know what you could do? You could take copies of these pictures and send them to the club, and they'll post them on the bulletin Advance. board, and they'll always be top of mind. Advance. So I'm always thinking, like maybe it was because of the PR job I did in Connecticut, so I was aware of promotion and at the bank in Connecticut, so maybe I was into that because of exposure I had to PR, but I always liked PR, and I always liked performing. 
I mean, you don't get on PM Magazine as a 16-year-old. You were on PM Magazine? I didn't want to drop that off. The, I what buried the, the lead. I buried the lead. You did. I remember PM Magazine. Yeah. I was so, like, I had a, I, I, I used to be a baseball card collector, and I put together a convention when I was 16. And there you go again. It's like, oh, I like the idea of With commerce. All flying friends? <laughs> all the guys from the airport. <laughs> yeah. Come on down to the card show. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, come on, Phil. Yeah, so that was something I was into. Like my my folks encouraged. I was into buying and buying my kids, my friends' baseball card collections because oh, everybody was getting rid of them. Look at you, you're a liquidator. <laughs> Holy crow! I was I'm Mitt Romney kind of, isn't you it? You really are. You would. Just, oh, I'm not really interested in these anymore. Oh, really? I'll give you five hundred oh, for the for the lot. Really? Mm. <laughs> five bucks for the yeah. lot? I bet. Oh my gosh. Yes, yeah, because then it was cards got popular in the late '70s. In that people were buying them it became started to become popular as a hobby but at that time my friends were like i don't need these <gasps> so they just sell them and some of them were worth stuff others weren't i'd put sets together and sell them at these card shows buy and sell friends cards and i was like i should put on a convention are you just always you yeah. just always cranking yeah yeah that's great right keeps you from going nuts yeah and then eventually you go i got i got sick i used to be i used to work so hard trying to promote on top of creating that I would I'd get colds and then I'd be out for a week. Yes. Cause exactly. I, yeah, because I moved Now you're out. describing my old life where yeah. I was doing both and, and, and at some point something has to give. Yeah, and that was what happened when I moved out. I moved to L.A. in 94 and uh, still did the road for three of those years and then stopped doing the road in 97. That's when I started booking TV stuff. And so then I also got involved with the Acme Comedy Theater doing sketch and I was auditioning during the day shooting things now and then oh it's so much and doing sketch comedy and then promoting it it's like i get my flyers together oh i got to get the drama log quote and the la weekly quote and send those out to agents and stuff people saying oh, no. burning it at both ends yeah and then it was like i got i would get sick so i tried it's weird it's like i, I want to tamp down a little bit of that so hmm. you know well that's interesting i mean it's almost a. Uh... I don't want to make this a ter therapy session, but it almost smacks of like a bipolar type of thing where you you get to the manic place and we got to get all this stuff done and then you just crash of like I, I can't yeah. I can't maintain this. I don't think it's that. Bipolar. I don't. You don't strike me as that right. either. But but I, I get it. it's like well, dude, because a lot of friends are like, hey man, like I remember doing a sketch show once and somebody, man, all you care about is getting people out to see the show. I'm like, they're coming out to see you too, you idiot. If you Whatever I do, you should say fantastic, because they're not going to come here and go. I'm going to go in the lobby while anybody but Chip is on stage. Right, you idiot. So, you know, people. I think people the say that. Good thing. man. Yeah, I think people get kind of kind of jealous. Like, oh, I don't don't care. Why are you promoting it so much? Shut up. Anyway. Wow. People are the worst. Definitely took a turn. Oh, uh, man. You still go up and out, right? You go up uh, in town? Uh, I, I don't, haven't much. done stand-up that much lately. I just kind of, I want to do it, but I think I, you got to want to do it, and I just don't want to do it. That's right fine. Now. That's Well, fine. yeah, but I'm not done. So I, I think um, like there's Chris, more. Okay. I'm not finished doing my nightclub act, as I call it. But uh, Are you I think, waiting for inspiration of something? <laughs> new material? Um, the right moment? It, it got to a point Political for me. Political climate to change anything? Uh, it got to a point for me. It's just like everything, everything was a hassle around doing sets. And I didn't want to do the road anymore. I stopped doing the road in 97. And as I loved living at home, having my own bed every night. Mm. And I was, it was great. And then it was like calling for sets got to be such a pain. And then you're like, why? You're chasing it. You really have to chase it. Yeah. And there's so many, forgive me, but young people out there just doing that and i just look at the energy burn and i'm like holy yeah. fuck it's, it's, it's something you do <laughs> when you're in thing. your 30s but then you're like oh, i gotta do what <laughs> i just think of the time it's like you, you show up at 10 to yeah. maybe go on at 12 30 like i'm in bed at 8 30 and it's you know <laughs> i get up at five you know i'm an old man now it feels like i get it i love the hang but it is a different energy yeah and and you're still the old well you're not terrible you're older than these guys who are in the 30s Odor. That odor. was, that was uh, little Ohio kid yeah. there. Odor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and say, hold Drop on, the hold on. Yep. Hold on. Hold on. Exactly. Hold on. That's so funny. <laughs> Do you drop uh, what did she used to say? I, 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 well, forgive me, Mrs. Ryan. There was, but there was once a lady in my life who was from Ohio. Oh, my. And she, uh, uh, what, like the car needs washed, not to be washed. Oh, it needs whatever. washed? needs washed, or, you oh. know, the, the, the couch needs cleaned, or whatever the heck. Is that anything you would ever do? Uh, we have Warsh. Like, I grew up in Mount Washington. You wouldn't drop words, though? Like, to be gets uh, dropped? It's a foreign thing. 
Yeah, I don't know. Oh, okay. I, t- I personally drop the ends off of uh, words, I've noticed. The ends? The end of a word. Like, I'll say, uh, <laughs> you know, instead, of, instead of saying, I noticed, I'm like, oh, I noticed. And it's like, Whoa. you're not going to finish? Because <laughs> so I know amazing. this because uh, another thing I did when I, st- I used to keep a journal, and I decided during my road days, I thought, oh, well, I got to keep a journal. Or all this 10 years on the road will be a big blur. This, again, is you keeping everything. Organizing it. it never let it go. Archiving it. Keep it all in control. <laughs> Got it in control. Uh, so then uh, <laughs> I decided I'm going to transcribe this journal. Oh, my God. But I can't. You did not. So I got one of those Dragon Naturally Speaking software things. Headset came with it, 50 no. bucks. No. I read all of my journals. <laughs> it's like it's like hundreds of thousands. It's like a hundred, couple hundred thousand pages. It's crazy. Oh, my God. And there's some interesting stories. And how in accurately does it transpose? Like, do you do it live time and you read it so that you're sure that it's right? Or uh, do, we, do we go back and whatever story that you once told <laughs> is now completely different because it's garbled? It does a very good job and gets better as you go. Like, it learns. Oh, you can correct it as you go. And uh, it's very good. So I it recommend knows that it. you mean notice. Yes. He's, he on. forgot the ED on the end. Because I'll read correct it. Correct his tenses, would you? This guy's crazy. <laughs> Finish your words. <laughs> Enunciate. Breathe in before you speak. <laughs> That's probably what would have helped. So yeah, a very my my dragon naturally speaking showed me something in myself I didn't know. Do you do voiceovers too? I do. Whenever they let me, I just did uh, did a Family Guy. Which oh was no, kidding! Fun. That's a big deal. Yeah, did a couple episodes of that. Did a uh, just did a Dragons show, but I'm not allowed to say what it is because it's not out yet. Oh my gosh. That's the one I wanted to hear about. Yeah, well, it's all top secret. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so whenever they let me do voiceovers, I love to do voiceovers. I did uh, do movies now and then when they let me. I did a Battle of the Sexes. What's that? What's that? I mean, well, I'm aware of the age-old Battle of the Sexes. Yeah. Mars this is, and Venus. This is uh, 1973 when Billie Jean King and uh, Bobby Riggs played tennis against yeah, each other. I, I remember the yeah. story. and I remember. You mean you did the documentary that came out? No, I was in the movie that came out with uh, like Steve Carell and Emma Stone. Emma Stone? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And I played Rune Arledge, the ABC sports president. No and kidding. I got all mad I at see. Billie I think Jean. we actually even have that on the queue to watch, and we just haven't watched it yet. Oh, really? Now we have a reason. You have a reason. And uh, between uh, takes, we're sitting on the set there, and I said to Emma, so, where are you from? She's like, uh, Sacramento. And then she said, where are you from? Which surprised me, because in Hollywood, people don't, they don't no one they're thinking about this guy, yeah. all about themselves. <laughs> I said, oh, I'm from, I'm from Cincinnati. She said, oh, my parents are from Columbus. They went to Miami. I said... I went to Miami. What uh, year did your folks graduate? Come on. 82, and I'm at 86. What's your mom's name? Uh, Kathy Yeager. I was like, she was a Delta Gamma. And I was like, okay. Then we shot the scene. I text my buddy, whose wife was a Delta Gamma. I go, did anybody know Kathy Yeager? She'd been older than we would have been there. And then I get a message back from my buddy's wife, Margaret. Yeah, that's uh, Karen's sister, Kathy. She's, uh, she was my housemate with Katie and me. And I was like, so I came back from the break. I go, Emma, the world just got smaller. I went to college this. with your Aunt Karen. <laughs> no way. What's your name again? Who are the girls' names? Crazy. Yeah. And I was like, I didn't know. It's the world's small. I love when that happens. Yeah. I really do love when that happens. I was on Everybody Hates Chris, and one of the assistant directors came up to me one day and said something. I can't remember how we talked about it. it was, oh, my Aunt Catherine lived in, in Manhattan. 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 Uh-huh. We're talking about Manhattan. Not and, a small place. Right. And blah, blah, blah. We're over by the UN and blah, blah, blah. I said, dude, I said, she lived over by this, by this uh, Italian restaurant that was really good to so the smells, but it was a fifth floor walk up, but they would always come upstairs. So I'm being pretty uh, illustrative with, yeah. my, with my descriptions, with my um, um, telling of the story. And he goes, your aunt wasn't Catherine, was it? And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yes, it was. Manhattan. You just singled out the That's one crazy. apartment in Manhattan, and it was 40 years earlier. Wow. And the, that's he knew a, her that's like thirty crazy. years earlier. Yeah, probably at that time, forty years from now. Isn't that crazy? I did an episode. I love when of, that shit yeah. happens. Did an episode of the Kids Are All Right last year, and um, we do a table read. And after the table read, this guy comes up. Hey, uh, hi, Chip. My name's Sam. I play the oldest kid in the uh, show. I'm like, oh, hey, Sam. Nice to meet you. And he said, you're from Cincinnati. I go, yeah. He goes, I'm from Cincinnati. So oh, really, where where are you? Uh, what part of town? Oh, the east side. I go, I'm from Anderson Township. Mount Washington area. And he said, same here. I said, what street did you grow up? Oh, off Salem. I said, I grew up on Salem. What uh, what street? <laughs> Holtz. I go, <laughs> okay. You pull out of Holtz and you turn right and then look to your left. That's my driveway. And Holtz is a small street. And I'm like, what? What are the chances? It's and exactly he, the same thing. Yeah. And he says, and I said, where did you go to school? Oh, Guardian Angels. 
I said, so did I. He goes, yeah, my mom says she might know you. She knows you. I go, well, who's your mom? Jill Grogan. He goes, see your dad's Pat Crawford? Oh, my God. <laughs> he goes, yeah, he's my stepdad. I go, Pat would play softball in our yard all the time, and I know Jill. It's a small world. Yeah. And uh, so it was just. It's an incredible I love story. Go. I love those stories. I love yeah. those stories. It was cool. Uh, what have we not gotten to? I know you've got some stuff coming up. You've got. Uh, what do I have coming up? Yeah, we'll do that. Do I have anything coming up? No. No, I did. I, How no. about social media? You're on social I'm media? I'm on social media. I'm at Chip Chinnery for all kinds of things. At Chip Chinnery? Yeah. All right. And that's on Instagram? That's on Instagram. It's on Facebook. It's on Facebook, Twitter, Twitter. It's on Facebook. All the things. So I've cornered the market on at Chip <laughs> Chinnery. Um, yeah, Make so, sure to post that later. What else is going on? I, I, I have been writing my memoirs. As you know, I have yeah, the journals. Yeah, so you started that. So <clears> where are we yeah. going with that? Well... I also I because I feel like you need to let go a little bit. You've yeah. collected a lot of Well look what else I because you know I made the Delta Time capsule. Well I everybody archived knows that. that, sure. And that's so right after that I can't that's jump. That's why I right wanted in. to open with it, of course. Right. <laughs> I can't jump right back into another project, but what I did do is stand up. <laughs> you know, I had to take some time off. But I uh, I used to take pictures on the road of all the stand ups I worked with. So I have I had about five thousand negatives, photo negatives, and I was like Maybe if I paired up the pictures with the people and the <laughs> stories, maybe I'd have something. So I've been doing that, and it's kind of interesting. Living in something 30 years ago, as much as that can be. Well, that's what I'm doing. That sounds fantastic. That yeah. sounds like a sounds book really I would buy, like a coffee table book. That's what I think, and I think it has to be something multi... Because I have all these pictures, and I think that's what's really cool about it. Um, st- sure, some of the stories are interesting, but <clears throat> to have pictures of, um, you know, a Dave Attell. Or not Dave Attell, I keep... I'm That's dropping Dave time. Attell again. Third time. I got to get in touch with Dave. I have some questions. Wasn't he at SNL that time with Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> oh Harley? man, I could tell you stories about Wasn't Dave. He? <laughs> but Dave Chappelle was uh, 16 or 17 when we opened at the uh, Americans, uh, the Phillipsburg Seafood and Buffet uh, Restaurant in Baltimore. And, uh, this was outside of DC in Alexandria, Virginia. Yeah, I know these places. These yeah. are crab places. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, exactly it's uh, that's crazy. They took out a booth Small and put a one foot riser there, and we did a st- we did a show, you know, ten feet from the sea salad bar, at what is essentially a, a clam house, yeah, a lobster house. Yeah, and I have pictures. You know, we're hey sitting there <laughs> taking a picture, and then the next couple weeks later, we did the Garvin's in DC, and it was right when Millie Vanilli uh, got busted. Blame for it on the singing. rain. Sure. Yeah, they were. They were. Uh, the, remember when they were lip syncing and they got blame busted? it on the real singers? Yeah, oh. it was a huge deal. Yeah, so that was the same way. And then one of them died. Oh yeah. yeah I don't, I don't think he one. died from that. I hope not. Oh, I thought no. All right. I hope not. But well, I was working with Dave, and I, I said, okay, what I want to do? So I recorded Attell or Chappelle. I'm sorry, we we're with Chappelle now. We've moved okay. away from Attell. <laughs> Two very very famous <clears throat> Daves. Uh, if I only knew Letterman, I know the desk though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so Chappelle, I was like, okay, I recorded a joke in my tape recorder. And I asked Dave, when I, after I finish this joke, would you play this through the sound system and I'll lip sync it and then we'll all have You're a good laugh. I see. And so Dave was my tech guy the week, weekend I did good at Garvin's. Grief. Yeah. And in my journal, I wrote down, I think Dave has a big career in TV and films. Hey. He's very likable. Wow. You really nailed what year the was this? future of that. <laughs> what year was this about? Uh, 1990. Yeah, oh, so that would have been before The Naughty Professor, which oh. was his breakout thing, and then obviously the show and all the other stuff. I'm wow. just saying, I should have quit then and wow. managed to. You really wow, called wow, it wow. good job. <laughs> hey, you saw the obvious. Great, yeah, good for you. <laughs> you say, wow, this guy, oh, thought you're the guy you thought was talented. He could tell. <laughs> you thought Chappelle would go somewhere. Really, oh, Chappelle. good job. Yeah. Again, over and over again. <laughs> uh, so, um, so that's what's keeping me busy lately, just <laughs> pretending it's 1989 and remembering things. How has this experience been? Great. Being on this classic talk show in, a, like in somebody's it. home. I like it. This is very nice. I like the set. I like the people. You like um, the are fantastic. I really like your energy. Thank you. I really Thanks appreciate you me. coming here and being so open and so, I don't know. This was very easy for when me. When you're it's like the easy. next Neil Armstrong, <laughs> you can do these things. You carry, <laughs> uh, so you just have the confidence and the yeah. air about you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, Chip Chinnery, can't tell you how much we appreciate it. Thanks, j I hope that you come back sometime. Cool, thank you. Tell thank us more you. stuff. Yeah, when the book comes out. Yeah. Eight years from now. Produce this talk show. <laughs> Add it to the list of all the famous talk shows you Send produce. the photos in the meantime. <laughs> um, <laughs> curious. Uh, yeah. Social media we hit. Instagram story we did. No dates. Goodbyes. Mrs. Ryan. 
<laughs> Tomorrow we're not here. Friday we're at Breakfast Club, and ne- oh, next week's a big next week's next a big week's week. Back. We've got uh, let's see, Alan Havy is here. We've got uh, Jamie Lynn Siegler and uh, somebody else that we're not sure of. There's a date that may or may not be filled. Cool. Uh, that's a big week though. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. I love you very much, Mrs. Ryan. We love, love you too. very much, Mr. Chip Chinnery. Thanks for having me. Thanks Thank for you for being me. here once again. <laughs> we love everybody at home. Please love one another, and we will see you next week. That's what I hear. I don't know what the lyric is. Ha, 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 ha.